Hey, what's up everyone? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me. I am here at my home once again, and today we're gonna to be doing some cooking. Now, when you think about backpacking and bushcraft, and you think about breads that you can make out there, a lot of the same thing comes up like hardtack, ash cakes, bannock, and those are all well and good. But today I wanted to introduce to you guys a little bit to the concept of using tortillas while you're out there. Now, tortillas are very simple to make, and they're very versatile. I mean, you can use them for breakfast, lunch, dinner, as a snack, uh, even as a dessert if you know what you're doing. So throwing a little bit of my Southwest culture onto the bushcraft scene, uh, I, I think this is something worth trying out. If you're at home right now, this is a perfect time to try out making tortillas if you've never made them before. And you can make them while out camping, especially car camping. They're very easy. We've made them many times out there. It can get a little bit more difficult if you're backpacking, especially during the summer, but it is possible. So thank you for joining me. Let's get to cooking. Okay, so let's discuss ingredients. Now, first and foremost, we're using all-purpose flour. Now, if you if there's one thing to take away from this video, guys, it's buy flour, particularly if you are new to prepping. Look historically at pioneers and mountain men and settlers. Flour was an essential. The basics like flour, coffee, sugar, those things is what they needed. So when you go to the store now and you're getting frustrated because you're not finding bread and, and tortillas, that kind of stuff, just get flour and you have all the time in the world to practice making different things with it. Um, you know, it's the building block of a lot of types of, of grains and uh, breads and that kind of stuff. So um, if there's one thing to take away from this is flour is pretty good. So if you're new to prepping, this is something that you're gonna overlook a lot, don't. Next from here, we have some baking powder. We just need a little bit of this stuff. Next is some salt, a little bit of salt will help with the flavor. Now, it could be any salt, it could be iodine salt. I just don't have any right now, so I'm using this Larry Season Salt, I really like this stuff. Gives it a little bit extra of a kick, um, but that's just what I have right now, making do with what I got. Next is butter. Now, historically, a lot of people, you know, used, were using um, lard. I don't have lard. Uh, you can use shortening if you want. I'm using butter. Once again, I'm making do with what I have at my home right now. And that's just the way I'm used to it, to be honest. Some people even use coconut oil, and that's fine. So you can. there's many ways to do this. And last but not least, this is completely optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Uh, but I do because I love spiciness. So I have cayenne pepper, and this is the powdered form. Um, I like to throw a little bit in there. Gives the tortillas a little bit extra flavor. You know, not enough to, you know, burn your mouth or anything like that, but it does add a little kick to it. So I like to do this. Once again, completely optional. And last ingredient is hot water. I would suggest just about seven ounces. Uh, get it as hot as possible. You don't want it boiling hot because you're going to have to touch it with your hands. So right below that, but you want it pretty damn warm. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of water. Okay, so let's begin with the flour. Uh, this is the one part that is a little bit of a pain when you are, at, out, are out camping is you need a large enough bowl to mix in all the ingredients. So we're gonna start with three cups of flour. They don't have to be packed to the top. They don't have to, you can if you want to. Uh, mine's relatively up there and we are using once again a cup measurement since we're already here at my house. Might as well try to be as uh, precise as possible. So that's one, two, three. Next is two teaspoons of baking powder. Once again, because we are home, I have the access to, you know, all these little exact measurements. Uh, you, what you can do if you're gonna go camping is of course you can put this in a pre-mixed, uh, in a bag, in a large Ziploc bag kind of thing. Uh, so that way you don't have to worry about that stuff or just, you know, with practice, you kind of just, you're able to eyeball it. Next is salt. Once again, you can use any type of salt. I'm just using the seasoned salt because that's all I have at the moment. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, just one teaspoon of salt and then one teaspoon, once again, of cayenne powder, basically. So mix that bad boy in there. You can mix them any way you want. Um, you know, if you have one of those little beater things, I forgot what they're called. I have one here at home, so I can easily use that. But as of right now, just to show you guys how you can do it, like if we're improvising while out camping, 
Just, you know, you could use your hands. Eventually your hands are gonna get dirty anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But you wanna mix all this stuff together before we add the butter and the water. Just be careful you don't make a mess, because flour's quick to dust up and it starts dirt dirting you up. Okay, we sifted all the dry ingredients together. Now we're gonna start adding butter. Now I added one third of butter. You can add a little bit more. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you, your your choice. Um, I did leave the, the butter out a little bit so it gets softer, so it starts kind of melting a little bit, so it's easier to break down in here. And this is where all the, the fun begins. So in the meantime, this is happening. I'm gonna start uh, heating up my water. Once again, you don't want it boiling hot, you don't want it scalding hot where you burn your hand, but you just want it pretty damn warm. Basically as warm as you're comfortable, you know, touching for quite a, a good amount of time. But, uh, but yeah, we're getting there. Okay, and now we add the water. Now I'm gonna warn you guys before, you know, for anyone that hasn't really, doesn't have a lot of experience with this, this is where I struggled for a long time because I would put too much water and I'd end up, end up with a bunch of like gooey dough, it was a mess. So what I like to do is go slowly. Like I, I did warm up seven ounces of water. What I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna put about six ounces, leave a little bit of water left, and then I'll add it gradually. And then I'll still have a little bit of water left, not not to be used yet. And uh, yeah, very warm. So knead all that together cool there we go check that out at first it does get a little bit you know gooey as you can see with my hands you just get used to it and you know it's just kind of just feels like you're playing with play-doh as a kid, I haven't played with Play-Doh in forever, but uh, yeah, that's how it feels like. Knead it. Start mixing everything together. You see how we still have a little bit of flour there, a little bit of powder. I'm trying to mix that in there. I might need to add a little bit more water. So I kept kneading for about five minutes and check it out. I mean, I got most of the flour in there majority of I mean I was just rolling it in there Punching it down showing it who's boss that kind of stuff uh, But yeah, check it out You don't want to leave a good amount of flour left over because then you're just being wasteful so waste not So pretty good stuff right here, and then I have my cutting board right here. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break off pieces and rolling into a ball. Now this is up to you how big you like them. I kind of like my tortillas a little bit small and chunky. If you want them larger and you want to have them a little bit, you know, bigger, you can do that as well. And this usually makes about the average about 10 of them. So say you're out camping solo, you don't need 10, you can easily break this recipe in half. And that's gonna be just fine. But yeah, you want little dough balls like this. You know, you can get as uniform as you want, all that stuff. I really don't care. So, yeah, once again, I'm shooting for about nine of them. All right. Okay, we got about 10 of them. Once again, 10 of them, you know, is it's a good amount of, you know, it's maybe enough food for, for two people for two days. So if you are solo, stuff like that, backpacking, you don't need this much. You know, you can always just break down that recipe in half. And now we're gonna let it rest for about 10 to 12 minutes. And you could use a wet tape paper towel. I'm just gonna use a clean bandana that I have. Once again, it's damp. It's not soaking wet or anything like that. And I'm just gonna cover them and just let them rest for about, once again, about 12 minutes. Just 
Okay, it's been 12 minutes. Now we're gonna start rolling them. Now if you're home and you have a rolling pin, that's awesome. That's gonna be ideal. However, once again, right now I'm trying to simulate like if we're car camping. So what something I would have is one of these bottles, these stainless bottles. This is what I use when I'm out camping. So, just a quick, quick dusting of flour on this. All right, and then we'll start. So here's the first one. Smush this bad boy. And I did choose the smallest of the tortillas, so this one's not gonna be very large. And of course, you could use your hand as well. Kinda try to make it as circular as you want. Kinda spread it out a little bit. Turn it around. And once again, this is the smallest of the tortillas, so it doesn't look very large. I myself don't really care too much about having it perfectly circular. I'd say that's pretty good. But I mean, if you want to keep it, you know, if you want to make them larger like the ones you see at the store, you can keep doing that. Also, if you want to get them as thin as you want, I once again, I like them a little bit chunky. So I kind of don't really go this large. But that's all personal taste. It's a little, looks like an island or something. But that's fine. Once again, you can use your hands too. So that's fine right there. Uh, let's get a larger one. Apologies, my table's rocking. Check it out. Not the most round, of course, but it's getting there. So you can definitely use these for like tacos, fajitas. Like when you, I don't know if you guys saw our making chicken fajitas video while camping. This would be excellent. This is a great size for fajitas. And once again, we're just hanging them off to the side. We don't, I don't really like letting them touch. So just in case they start sticking together. And if it starts sticking too much to your rolling pin or your container, once again, a little bit of dusting of the flour. Don't get too crazy with it. You don't want to add too much flour back into the mixture, but just enough so it's not sticking to the pin. There we go. So I've been heating up this cast iron. Had it pretty high. I might lower it at this point, but I just wanted it to have it pretty warm for a few minutes and then we're going to throw in our first one. And while you're doing this, if you want something a little bit more circular, kind of widen it out, you can do it with your fingers. Just be careful doing this because of course the other side of this dough is really hot. So, you know, don't risk that, but check this out. I'm slowly spreading the, this out to make it larger. And you can see this, the bubbles from the heat starting to form. We've left it for about 30 seconds. You can see the bubbles rising. That's a good sign. Let's turn this around and we're getting there. Some residue from earlier cooking, but there we go. And we're going to leave it for about 30 seconds on each side and that should be decent. All right, so let's check this bad boy out. And that is pretty good. Check that out. Nice and soft. Good stuff. One more just to show you guys. So throw that bad boy right on there. Once again, if you want to make them a little bit bigger, you can use your hands. Just be careful not to burn yourself. Don't look away while you're talking or whatever. And of course, being in the kitchen, you know, we're in a controlled simulation. I can control the heat, the output of the heat and all that. Once you're in a campfire, you know, over a grill, maybe it'll be a little bit different. 
Um, so you'll have to improvise. But as long as you start seeing these bubbles forming and give it about 30 to 40 seconds on each side. And uh, so far, so good. So let that cook up. You can see more bubbles forming on there. It's a good sign. Turn that bad boy around. Check that out. Homemade tortillas. And there we have it, folks. Homemade, fresh, warm tortillas. The house smells delicious. Um, of course, they're not as uniform as something you you know you would purchase that was made in a factory. But once again, homemade, made with love, and something I've been meaning to mention into the bushcraft community. Uh, very overlooked. The tortilla. We all know that a tortilla has many uses, from breakfast, lunch, dinner, uh, fajitas, tacos, burritos. Uh, you can, you know, the, the old Mexican custom is you would dunk it into your coffee or what I'm used to is um, I like to dunk it into my stew, like green chili stew and that kind of stuff. Really delicious. So now my favorite part of the cooking video is the taste test. But check how smooth that cuts. I mean, that is just delicious. Can't wait. Mm hmm. It's really warm and fresh right now. It's very buttery. But then that cayenne gives it a little bit of a kick. Not enough where you're going to be uncomfortable, you know, if you're not into spiciness. But it does give it a little bit of personality, and I really dig that. So thank you for watching, guys, during this whole time of staying at home. There's no reason we can't practice new methods of recipes for enjoyment. But at the same time, these recipes can be useful in some kind of, you know, survival scenario, uh, homesteading scenario, whatever the case may be. So once again, tortillas, very useful, very versatile. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any questions, comments, even suggestions. I know there's a lot of old timers out there that know their stuff more than I do when it comes to these old dishes. So let us know. So thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Now stay safe and cook delicious food.